Hello, Morocco. Have you heard of the Business in Morocco podcast? A podcast is like a radio talk show where the hosts talk about topics or interview guests, and I co host a weekly podcast focused on business in Morocco. Now, recently, we interviewed a very exciting Moroccan entrepreneur named Anwar Akarwash. And I wanted to share his interview on this channel because there's so many powerful lessons we can learn from his journey so far. Now, he's still a young guy. It's early in his career, but he's already had some exciting experiences in the startup scene, both in France and here in Morocco. At the end of the video, I'm going to share five lessons that we can learn from his journey. So if you're entrepreneurial, if you've thought about starting up your own company, stick around to catch all of those lessons. Now the video is around 30 minutes, so I've also put in the description extra details about what we discuss, so you could skip ahead to the topics that are most relevant to you. All right, here's the interview. Okay, welcome to episode 68 of the Business in Morocco podcast. Today we have Anwar Akarwash with us. He's an entrepreneur working in Casablanca. He's going to share about different ventures he's been a part of and that he's founded. So it's going to be a great episode to, to learn from his journey. So Anmar, thank you so much for being here. Welcome. Thanks to you. Thanks. Would you mind just introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about your background, uh, where you come from and uh, your education. Just introduce your journey to us a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, my name is Anwar Akarwash. Uh, I'm from Casablanca. I grew up here in Casablanca and I left to, to France uh, for study after uh, 17, 18 years old. Uh, I studied energy engineering uh, because I wanted to go back, to, to come back to Morocco and work for the air conditioning, for an air conditioning company. Mm. Because I have a family working there, that's, that's why. Uh, in Morocco, like, it's very hard. <laughs> so air conditioning is, for me, it was like, uh, okay, this is the, the perfect uh, topic. Yeah, uh, I could so, use some right now, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I studied that. Then I went, I, I went, I was in Grenoble, then I went, I moved to, to Paris. I worked like one year as a, an air conditioning company, you know, like an like energy engineer. Uh, then I start like, uh, first I, okay, so for just for the, for the story, I, I, when I was studying, I tried to, to create a box who can freeze a wine or beer in less than two minutes doing different process. Uh, we do a kind of MVP of the, of the hardware, but it was complicated because you, you can freeze actually a wine in two minutes, but you kill the wine. You cannot drink it. Mm. It's cold. It's the perfect temperature, but you cannot drink it. Mm. So this is one of those businesses where you're, you start it because you're trying to solve a problem that you have. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, uh, no, honestly, I just wanted to create something. Uh, like uh, I was in study and, uh, and it was just, I want to just to applicate what uh, I was learning. Mm, okay. So, yeah. so, okay, we can do this. And I said, okay, we can do this. We can sell it to all the, all the countries. We can say everywhere we, where it's hot. Yeah. But so it, was that your first kind of venture into entrepreneurship or had you always been very creative and thinking of ventures before? Uh, it's the first one who really I create an MVP. Uh, I tried to really to, to create the, the hardware with my professor and like I, I activate a lot of people and I, I, I call for help for mm -hmm. different experts. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. it's the first one. Uh, then I, uh, one day I was working and, and I saw like the, there is like WhatsApp, Instagram, and all the like scalable companies. I said, okay, what's this? So I, so I tried to, I started learning, uh, reading books and watching like a uh, conference. And, and I, lo I launched a uh, chat call. Chat call, it's a ephemeral messaging app, uh, text messaging app. It's like, uh, there is like Snapchat. It was just the photo and the chat call was the text. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it was my first soft uh, startup. Software startup. Now, now, did you do the development for that uh, application? No, 
No, no, I'm, I'm not a developer, so I, I had like no idea how to develop uh, something like that. Uh, what, uh, I went to, to San Francisco, I participate to different uh, like startup weekend, startup mm -hmm. e events, and I, I pitched uh, the chat call, I said, okay, in France, I, I just do the design, I just learned how to, do, to design an app. I do design, I know, I, I, okay, in France, we have this app, and it's amazing, like er, everyone is using it, and we are soon launching in the in, uh, in US. So if you want to try it, just subscribe to this mail and I will send you the beta test. And I, back to, I come back to Paris and I don't the same. <laughs> okay, this is the, in, in, in California, they're all using this. <laughs> and, we soon, and we will soon launch in, in Paris. So if you want to use it, just subscribe to the beta test. And once I got like more than one, uh, 700 sub subscribers, Say so, okay, now I need to, to, to find a developer, mm. and I found a developer. It was a freelancer, a Moroccan one actually. Very very smart guy, uh, but it was very complicated because we develop we, we develop a lot of future uh, features, like well, but no one wants to use them. So oh, okay. we a lot of time, but we but we, we had like more than five. Uh, 5,000 downloads in five countries. So it was good. But, I, but I, it's not the product. I think it was just the pitch and the, 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 me, the message around the chat call was interesting. But it was very complicated, complicated to, to, to develop and to use it. What would you say would be the one thing that you could tell our listeners who want to be entrepreneurs? What was the one thing you learned about that experience with chat call? Um, that has better prepared you for entrepreneurship today? Don't develop your product, sell it before. Sell Just, your product first. Yeah, yeah, sell your product first. That's and, a great and, piece of advice. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and launch very, very fast, as fast as you can. Because if your product is a, is a shit and you have user, those users will use it if your product is, is better. Mm. So... But you're, if, you're pro, if your product is perfect and you have like no one want to use it, like. Yeah, that's a good point. So you had, you know, you pitched it in California, you pitched it in Paris and you had 700 people saying, yeah, I want to try your product. Yeah. And so at that point you said, okay, this is worth developing. There's already interest and people haven't even had a chance to try it yet. So I might as well put some time and money into it. And also but maybe it, the mis Go sorry. on. It, it was not easy to, to find a developer. Because if you, like developer, they are busy. They, ha they have a lot of work. Like de developers is the sexy job today. So mm -hmm. the sexy skills, but it's very complicated to, to, to say to a developer, ah, you know, I have an idea. If you want, I think we can be like uh, the next billion company. You know, I, I, I think he, he heard that like every day. Uh, it's the yeah. best idea in the world, basically. In the world. Yeah. So what did you do after that? Yeah, so after that, we worked for like one year, on one year for the chat call. Uh, then I done uh, Le Wagon. I wanted to, to learn to, how to code or to understand the technical part. So I done Le Wagon. I had some different side project, but not very like, I, w I wasn't like uh, focused 100% on it. Just really just to, to do like some, to code some websites. Uh, I do like some freelance stuff. So can you tell us more what, what is Le Wagon? Because some of our listeners won't have heard of it before. Le Wagon, it's a, it's a coding school. It's, I think it's the best coding school uh, to learn uh, for entrepreneur. It's really for entrepreneur. Why for entre entrepreneur? Because you, you just learn like uh, HTML, CSS, and Ruby. And only the thing that can help you to create like an MVP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, of course, after you can improve and be a developer if you want yeah for sure but it's like very focused for entrepreneur you have an idea you can build it yeah, yeah. you and, know how, it, how to handle database and everything did you go to a physical location for that school or did you do everything online no physical yeah physical physically. physical location because yeah, i i do believe they have a location in morocco don't they yeah they have run some uh some cohorts here in casa 
Yeah, okay. they are everywhere in a lot of countries. I don't know if they if they they still in Casablanca. I don't but, know if they just like they move around a little bit. I know they did one in 2018, but I'm not sure if they've done one since. Yeah, because uh, on their website, you uh, th there is no campus Casablanca. Mm -hmm. so maybe they they move on. Okay. So if you if you were going to make a recommendation to our listeners who want to be entrepreneurs, you would say that. The wagon is a, is a good choice to to learn the basics of coding if you want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, definitely, definitely. The CEO is very inspiring guy. He's also a teacher, uh, and all the teacher and people working at the wagon. The, the culture of the wagon is very good. Mm -hmm. So I definitely recommend it. Yeah. That's cool. Well, if it's not available here in Casablanca, we do have three WA the 3W Academy, which is a similar type of uh, model where it's a three month really intensive coding school that gives you that basic foundation from which you can right away become a freelancer, but then build on that. So that's a great option for young people. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, then I, what came next, Anwar? What did you do after the uh, way? After on? that, I worked for, uh, I, I joined a company named Trust, uh, Trusk. Uh, it's the Uber for the, for the uh, for for the for truck, mm -hmm. it's Uber for truck. Like in Paris, if you buy like something like a big sofa, you don't have a car. You just with a push of button, you have uh, you have your truck. Really? And you can move it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can move it. That's a and great that, idea. Yeah, definitely. And, and you, you don't have to. You don't have to go to. Uh, you don't have to go to Derb Halef and and negotiate for a Ronda with somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I developed the, the B2B part for them. It was at the beginning, it was just B2C, but with the B2C, you know, you, you don't move a sofa like every day. There is no mm -hmm. retention. Uh, so we developed the, B2, the B2B part. And after, when I was working with them, like just for three or four months, I met uh, Oscar, the CEO of Glovo. And I said, okay, I want to work for this guy. Mm. Can you talk a little bit, because I was looking at your LinkedIn profile at Trusk, you were involved in sales. You were mentioning you were doing basically B2B business yeah. development sales. Can you talk to us a little bit about sales and what you learned about sales specifically in B2B? Yeah. Uh, for, I, I don't understand like, what I learned like uh, in, in sales in general. or Yeah, in just, uh, you know, because a lot of people, you know, entrepreneurs think that, entrepreneurship is just about building products or services and and they may not understand how important sales are for every business owner so maybe you could share a little bit about what you learned about sales or or some of the things that you did to to find new customers yeah uh, the sales for a startup is different than the sales for other companies because in startup mm -hmm. you, you are selling something that doesn't work well it's always complicated so when you pitch it, you should be like always optimistic, never realistic, because if you're <laughs> realistic, it's complicated. Yeah. So and that's the part that was very exciting with Globo at the beginning. I joined them in, I think in April, and we, in April, and from April to June, I, we need to, to have, to, to sign a lot of uh, contracts. So that was very exciting because the company doesn't exist in France. Mm. And we just said, okay, we are the best, and, and, and we we were also the uh, the last movers because there's like Deliveroo, uh, Uber Eats, and uh, Foodora. I think uh, at the moment Foodora, like big startups, mm -hmm. and and it it was not easy because people are like uh, they say, oh no, uh, we have all, we work with, with all those those companies, so why will will I sign with you? Like a fifth one, like okay like uh, NEM, uh, another app, another app. And but so what did to... you say to convince them? Uh, it's very easy because Glovo, it was the only one to, you can, you can deliver, you can order food, groceries, pharmacy, everything you want in the city. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so that can... was uh, something that was different about you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, there is food. Food, there is a lot of retention for food. For sure, and they are also restaurant. So you can say, okay, okay, you can you deliver pharmacy, but it's not my problem. I sell pizza, so mm -hmm. we say, okay, to, today 
okay, you have this, but customers, they will have only one app. They will not have a lot of apps. Yeah. So they will have only one app. Mm -hmm. You can deliver everything. So, and this is and grow. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, that was the vision of uh, Oscar. See, How did Oscar. you meet Oscar? Uh, I, I, I was contacted by uh, a, a guy uh, in Paris. And he, he told me about Grovo. Uh, you should, you should meet, meet them. They, they want to launch in Paris. It's a very cool, cool product. So I read something. And like one week after, like Oscar told me, okay, I, I am coming to Paris. And we met in Paris. And it's a very inspiring guy. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. maybe you can do a podcast with him. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great to yeah. have him. For me, it's the, like, the top three best CEO in the world. Wow. Wow, yeah. that says a lot. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you worked for Glovo for like about a year and a half? Yeah. And then what, what happened next? Did you, why did you leave? Uh, I, because at the beginning, it was very exciting. It, it's, it's a startup. But after that, like the, the team are growing, uh, you, you do only sales and this part wasn't so exciting at the, as the, the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. At the beginning you are selling stuff and you are also like looking for, uh, uh runners, uh, runners is the, the delivery, um, uh, the delivery guys like the, yeah, people exactly. who, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the delivery guy. And you are looking for trying to, to convince the uh, pharmacy, this one. And you see like every day you, you are like, you have more, uh, more orders, more customers. So it was exciting. But after mm -hmm. that, it's a, it's a big company. It's structured. Uh, I was, I had like no contact with Oscar. Mm. And at this moment, it was okay. And I, I wanted to, entrepreneurship for me, it's, the, it's my thing. Yeah, we can see that. That's yeah. <laughs> okay. So then you knew, okay, this is becoming too corporate, too structured. I want to be back in that exciting startup lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. So what did you do next then? Yeah. So after that, I was in Paris. I, I bought an apartment there. Uh, I invest in uh, the best investment in, in Bitcoin. Okay. I was lucky because like I invest in Bitcoin and six months after like Bitcoin was on the top of the top of the top. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I just I stayed in Paris a little bit. Uh, we traveled with my with my girlfriend. Uh, after that, I say, okay, you know, um, I remember we was like uh, sunbathing, going to surf, and say, okay, I'm really happy, like just with t-shirt, short, and my flip flop. So mm -hmm. let's move from Paris and say, okay, but maybe next year we can go to Asia. And okay, but Asia. Hong Kong or Singapore, but we are not far from Indonesia. From, say, okay. Say, okay, but I want to move like very fast. And she, she had a promotion at her, at her job. So she can't left, she can't leave from job. So I say, okay, I will go tomorrow to Casablanca. I will try this, uh, uh, fit house now. It's electro stimulation. And if it works, we stay there. If no, we come back and I, I come back and we move to, to Asia. Uh, so I say, okay, she told me, I told her, okay, if I, if I sell 100 uh, class, uh, class session of uh, fit house, we stay in Morocco. Mm. And in two months, we sell like 250. So, so I tell us back. what is fit house when you're yeah. referring to this next company, explain it to us. Yeah. Fit house. It's the, uh, Electrostimulation, it's a sport coach with the electro, electro stimulation at home. Electro okay. stimulation is, you know, it, it's a technology. Uh, normally it was only for athletes, for big sportive people. But now, like since like five, six years, we can, we, people can use it and you can see the different studio in the world. And you do only 20 minutes of this and it, it's like you, you, you train for four hours wow. in, a, in a gym and it's not bullshit. It's very true. Yeah. No, my mm -hmm. wife has tried it and she, yeah. she has the sore muscles to, to, to back it up your claims. Yeah, definitely. It's the same technology as you, uh, when you go to a physiotherapist or. 
Exactly. So you were in Paris and you decided to test this idea in Casablanca to see if there was a market for it. How yeah. did you make sales from there? At the beginning, we, uh, I created an Instagram account. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I do a lot of class. Uh, I, 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 I do a shooting in Paris with a lot of friends. And we, we fake it like we say, okay, we, we are in Casablanca. We are doing this. Okay, and we every day we put we, we post photo, we do this. Okay, stories. Oh, that's crazy. People uh, and testimonial about from people. Okay, this is crazy. So and people start like contacting me. Okay, I want to try. I want to try. Of course, you cannot because uh, I was in Paris. <laughs> so, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, all my coach are full, but maybe next month if there is a a slot, I'll contact you. So uh, this is how you, you create your customer list. Mm. Okay, so you, you were advertising it as if the classes were happening, but that was just a way to test, is there a market for this? Is there yeah. customers? Yeah, if they want to try it. But before coming to, to Casablanca, I went to, to Madrid and uh, to buy the, the material. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I signed a contract with them as a distributor here in Morocco. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay. So you you import the products from Spain, and you yeah. sell you sell a product, and then uh, you also sell a service with that. Is, is that right? Yeah. Oh, there is two two different things. Like there is okay. there is the the service, mm -hmm. like for there's uh, recurrence retention. You can you, you sell uh, class station for two people. Okay. And the other side, but when you do this, like people start uh, hearing, okay, fit house, what's fit house? Okay, they do like uh, electronic stimulation, what's this? This is technology. Okay, I, I want to buy one. So they contact the company, they contact me, mm -hmm. and they, okay, okay, we can, and I can sell the, the product. Okay. And I go to Spain, I bring one, and I sell it. So, so is that individuals that buy the product or just a gym? Uh, gym, hotels, individuals also. And are you worried that if you sell these products, you'll cannibalize your own business? No, because the market is huge. And uh, mm. if there is like, uh, today I'm like, uh, I think I'm the only, the, the only player who do like this at home. Mm -hmm. But okay. if there is like other like competitors, uh, it's not a problem because it will just educate the market. Yeah. Yeah, that's and a good after that, just you okay, and they after that it's just a, a bottle or for uh, who is the best in marketing and who is, who had the best coaches with the best program and but the market is big and and honestly and after that I can like uh, I remember that before the COVID situation mm -hmm. like we sometimes I I, I really tell the people we, we we don't have slots and this it was true this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, that's not just, it was not just bullshit. Okay. We don't have slots. So yeah. Maybe you're full. Wow. Like, that's yeah. great. So you said you're selling B to C through Instagram. Um, what is your, what is your logistics look like when somebody orders one of these kits from you? Um, how do you get it to them? Do you use uh, Chronopost or are you doing fulfilling your own orders? No, I want to have like a lead. Uh, in Instagram or my email, or I okay, I, I call them. I try to understand what what they need uh, to 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 propose them like the best package. Then I I receive the the kit and I I deliver them because when I deliver them, I need to to explain mm. how how does it work and they have like also one day of formation mm. of okay. training how how to use the, the the technology, how to use the software, how when use this and when use this. Okay. So is it only now available in Casa or at least before the virus, were you driving all over Morocco to deliver the kids? Yeah. For, for kids delivery, like in Morocco, also in Senegal, but oh, wow. for the, for the, for the, the class, yeah. Only in Casablanca, Casablanca around like Dabo, yeah, mm -hmm. Casablanca. Okay. Wow. So you would sell a kit in, Senegal and you would travel down there and do a day of training with the, the purchaser. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So how is uh, the coronavirus, how has that changed 
your business? You know, what impact has it had and, and how have you adapted to the situation? With the COVID, it's uh, zero. Like now we, we are in, we, you cannot have class because it's a sport class at home, fit house, but you cannot move to, to train with people and uh, mm -hmm. for security also. So we mm -hmm. just sub the, the fit house company. It's, it's, in, it's in home. Mm -hmm. So then what have you done to adapt? What's, you, what's been your next step? Uh, next step, I I don't I don't have really like fixed idea, but for fit house for sure we'll continue just with uh, because I I have uh, coaches for that. At the beginning I, I was the coach, now I, I I have coaches, and they they do the work and it's kind of automated work because it's not scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just going and if I if if I have a lead uh, for, uh, for to buy a kit, okay, I I handle it. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the next step or for the next adventure uh, for sure something like scalable and uh, soft company okay so you've kind of shifted from doing the coaching sessions in fit house to hiring coaches that that do it all for you and you can just run the business from from wherever yeah so give us an idea of of if i'm a potential customer what are my options in terms of packages um, in terms of what I pay for the device and, and what does it cost to get the coaching um, and the services at home? Uh, so yeah, if you want like just one, uh, one kit, it's uh, 10,000 euro. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want two, three, four, five kits, that's, it's the selling. There's not negotiate. Neg mm -hmm. we, we negotiate and there's not a real fixed price. But it's around, uh, yeah, it's for just one, it's 10,000. Mm -hmm. And if you want more, more, we can negotiate, but it's around like eight to 10,000. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of the services, the coaching at home, what did, what did that look like? Uh, yeah, for, for the, this part, we sell uh, a carnet, mm -hmm. uh, like 10 class, yeah. 10 session, uh, 10 session. And you pay it at the beginning, so it, it helps me because I, at the beginning I have like like treasury, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you you can fix like uh, okay I wanna like on Monday, Thursday, Saturday, and it's maximum two session per per, per week. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about offering any kind of online services like through Zoom or um, WhatsApp or something like that? Yeah, it's com it's complicated. I thought about it if you want, if I just to to keep the community engaged mm -hmm. on Instagram and everything. But in Morocco, at the beginning, Instagram was perfect. But after that, it's just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So we no no we do we do nothing because you cannot do sport with the without the the technology, mm -hmm. and you can do, just do sport without this just for to keep the community, but yeah. Yeah. So then if fit house is reaching that point where it's a stable business and you've got it organized, you have coaches hired, then that means you as an entrepreneur must be wanting to start something, something else. So tell yeah. us a little bit about uh, 212 founders and, and your experience with homely. Yeah. 212 founders. Uh, I, I, you know, 212 founders, you, you know it. You, well, we well Ryan and I have been looking into it a little bit, but um, a lot of our listeners will never have heard of it. So yeah, so it's the it's a kind of uh, incubator accelerator for for startup here in Morocco. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, by by uh, CGI, uh, CDG, CDG Bank. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's a huge thing and it's very great. And we were of the, the first uh, batch. Mm -hmm. And uh, and for the Sonos founders, we uh, with my co-founder, we we launched a real estate company, a digital real estate company, uh, with like uh, everything digitalized, uh, with a good. Well, okay, the problem was, we when we, I went back to to Morocco, 
I wanted to buy a, an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of visits, a lot of visits. It was very long, very long. And my, my co-founder also. And, uh, and also I put like, uh, we had a, an apartment, a family apartment to sell. So it, it was managed by a, a real estate here in, uh, in, in Casablanca. And one day the, the agent called me, hey, hey come, we, I have a nice flat for you. Come visit. And I went to visit and it was like my own flat. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the family flat, you know. So, okay, so I was like visiting this. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, like there is like, like no professionalism, no, there is the, I, I didn't say like, you don't have like Excel, something like this. You, do you know who, who is the owner of this apartment? And uh -huh. say, okay, there is like no, no, it, no professionalism, they're yeah. like amateur. Say, and my, my co-founder had the same problem. And say, okay, uh, it's very expensive, uh, very bad service. So what can, how can we help? How can we, how can we change the thing? Yeah. So we launched uh, Homely. Homely is the digital real, real estate with a fixed price, paid only one success. So and and normally you pay like around five percent for when you buy something. Mm -hmm. With homely you pay around one percent. So you wow. have a better experience. Yeah. Everything is digitalized for for the seller. Uh, you have a dashboard. You can see. Uh, okay, you have uh, all those vi all those uh, visitors. Uh, you have like uh, this is this is planned. We do. We send a photographer, a professional photographer, who do the photos for you. So yeah. you have nothing to do. We handle it from zero to one. Mm. So it sounds like a, br a brilliant idea. And there's clearly a lot of problems and inefficiencies in the real estate uh, market yeah. here. So then what happened? Yeah, definitely. Like this, it's a brilliant idea. We do like the big mistake. It's we just do a copycat of different startups existing in, in Europe. Uh, so we... And like and the fight, so we we create a product focused on the for the seller, because in for example in uh, in Paris uh, is is the seller who who the pain is is uh, for the seller because mm -hmm. he pay a lot of uh, charge, a lot of uh, commission. It's very expensive. There is no services. It's mm -hmm. very bad. Mm -hmm. So we we cre we create this. And when we lo when we launched, uh, it was okay. We had like no problem to find sellers. It was very easy to find sellers. I said, okay, like we we had like uh, the best product. Like we are good sale, good sales. Yeah. But no. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we understand like after one month that okay, this is not the problem. The problem is to find the buyer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to to change all the. The product for to, to be focused on the buyer on the buyer not on the seller so of course we just create a, a different uh, website focused on the with a different branding focused on the on the on the the buyer the, the buyer mm -hmm. and but the problem we face on is the in the mark the market in morocco is very it's illogic like the price are very there is no logic in the price. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, we've okay. talked about this for a long time, especially commercial real estate and other kinds of real estate. Yeah. It, it seems that there it's, it's very expensive uh, versus yeah, yeah. what you're Definitely. getting. I think partially area. it's because there's a lack of information. And so it's hard to get a gauge on what is the market rate. And unless a buyer goes and looks at lots of different properties, then they don't have a clear idea. And for the, the seller, when they're listing their place, they can just say, oh, I think, you know, based on the, the square meters, that's, this is what it's worth. This is the neighborhood, yeah. this is the square meters. And they can't do enough research to find out, well, what, how does this compare to what everything else is being sold? There's a lack of information. Yeah, definitely. And there's also some, some, uh, some, some sellers, they say, okay, I wanna sell to at this price. They say, okay, you know, but we are a little bit expensive. We, I give you an advice, just put it at this price because this is the market today. You say, no, no, I want, I want to sell at this price. Say, but it's complicated to sell at this price. Say, okay, I, I will wait. 
<laughs> so, okay. Yes. So. I mean, we've seen this. I mean, um, there are properties, when I was looking for my office, the places that I could rent, I went to see uh, offices that had been empty for years. Yeah. No, no one rented. And they wanted a price that was just so expensive, but they wouldn't bring the price down and it stayed empty for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. It's the same for residential real estate. You see villas and apartments that are empty for years, just like Ryan's saying, because the landlord doesn't lower the price. Yeah. And they're also, and for the rent, they're also sometimes scared for if the, the, if the, the, the person don't want to pay or don't want to leave. It's, it's very complicated in Morocco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. The, uh, yeah. the, the legal side of it yeah, really so that's does why favor people, the, the tenant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if they don't need money, and there is a lot of apartment in Casablanca uh, owned by like uh, rich people. Mm-hmm. Like they have like two, three apartments and there is like zero, like they, they don't rent it and they don't want to sell. Mm-hmm. Or they yeah. want to sell at this price or they just, they don't want to rent because they don't need money. So, mm-hmm. yes. So, so as we, uh, yeah, as we come to the end of the interview, um, could you just give our audience um, your opinion of the future of entrepreneurship here in Morocco and, and maybe just give them some encouraging words about, you know, what you see are opportunities and uh, what you think the future looks like here in Morocco. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of opportunities in Morocco. And we have all the, the, the skills, like you, you can find like sellers, technical guys, everything. And there's a lot of people also coming back from Europe, coming back to, I have a lot of friends coming back to Casablanca because there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, sometimes it's not easy, uh, but there's a lot of opportunities. And also now with internet, you can learn everything and you can really, and you can address all the market of the world. But, uh, and testing it here in Morocco because it's very nice. It's very cool to test uh, uh, business in Morocco because it's this, it's like, for example, for, for feet house, it's very small. There's like a, a world of mounts and mm-hmm. you can really touch a community and it's, it's, and it's going very fast. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, so that's there's really a lot cool. of opportunity in Morocco. Come back guys, Morocco or, or <laughs> who are in Morocco. Just do it. Just do it. Try it. It's, it, it's fun also. Yeah. Yeah. We can tell that you love, you love it and that uh, you're not going to be working in a cubicle for a fortune 500 company for 25 years. We can see that in your journey. No, because also I would be like very bad in, in a big company. I think I don't have the skills to be in a big company. Mm. Mm. So. Well, thanks so much Anwar for uh, coming on the podcast and talking about your, your history and your business. We, List you the best of luck um, with FitHouse and any other entrepreneurial ventures that, that will be coming in the future. Um, we wish you health and safety during this uh, coronavirus uh, confinement, Thanks. and uh, we hope to talk to you again uh, soon. That would be pleasure. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be another venture we can bring you back on and learn about the, the next few startups you have. Yeah, soon. All right, that was a great interview. Now let's break down the five lessons I want to highlight that we can learn and apply in our lives from Anwar's journey. Number one is to test your ideas. He shared how he had 700 users for chat call before he had even developed the application. Or when he started FitHouse, he was posting stories and pictures on Instagram about classes as if they were happening in Casablanca, generating interest and he sold 250 sessions before he even left Paris. He had paying customers before he had put much time or effort or money into starting the business. That's called validating your idea, proving that there's a market and giving you more confidence that your idea will work. Number two is to launch an MVP fast. So Anwar shared how he failed on this with ChatCall. He was creating this perfect product, adding all kinds of features. Many of them turned out to be unnecessary and the app turned out to be a failure. It's better to create the minimum viable version of your product or service and launch it. Just ship it, just get it out the door. 
then you can collect customer feedback and improve and release a new version. If you've got a so-so product, but you have a few customers, they'll stick with you when you improve it, when there's a better version. But if you've got what you think is a perfect product, but no customers, you don't have a business. I've done another video on this just ship it philosophy. I'll see if I can put it there to check that out. Number three is to find inspiring mentors to work with. Anwar specifically joined Glovo because he wanted to work with Oscar. When you're young, you should focus more on what you are learning rather than on what you are earning. Have you heard of the expression golden handcuffs? To be in a high paying job where you're not really learning or developing, it's like a trap. Whereas to be working at a startup where the pay may not be high, but the opportunities to learn and develop yourself are through the roof, that's definitely where you want to be as a young person. So focus on who you're working for, who you're working with, and position yourself to be around those you can learn from and be mentored by. Number four, don't be afraid to fail. One of the things I love about Anwar is that he is not afraid to try stuff. He's been a part of so many different ventures already. When he was a student, he tried to create that box to freeze beer and wine. It didn't work. He developed a chat call and had 5,000 downloads in five countries, but ultimately had to discontinue the business. He joined Glovo, Trusk. He learned about the challenge of entering brand new markets. Now he started Fit House here in Casa and a real estate website called Homely. He's not afraid to enter a new market, try a new venture, and if he fails, he learns from it and he moves on. So don't be afraid to fail. Failures are often the stepping stones to success, and you'll see that in Anwar's career. Number five is learn continuously. The reason why failures aren't a problem for Anwar is because he learns from his mistakes and he takes those lessons and applies them into his next venture. You heard about how he became interested in digital, scalable startups, and so he started reading books and attending conferences. Or he went to San Francisco to be part of a, a startup camp where he learned how to pitch his ideas to investors. He did Le Wagon so that he could learn the basics of coding. He joined 212 Founders so he would have mentors as he did his real estate startup. He's constantly learning new skills, using Open Classroom, getting information, developing new skills and new habits that he can apply in his career. He's a guy that never graduates. The learning didn't stop when he finished his formal studies. So if you want to continue developing yourself, take this lesson from Anwar and learn continuously. All right, I hope you enjoyed that interview. If you'd like to hear more interviews, drawing out the lessons we can learn from people in a variety of different careers and industries, doing great things in business here in Morocco, be sure to listen to the Business in Morocco podcast. It's coming out every single week. We've already done 70 plus episodes. We've interviewed over 20 different business leaders. So you can find us on YouTube, Business in Morocco, or you can listen on our website, moroccopodcast.com or Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find the Business in Morocco podcast. All right, thanks again to Anwar. And until next time, get wisdom.